Hi guys! Welcome back. Uh, today I'm going to be starting a two-part uh, tutorial on how to paint an elite gendarme of the Imperial Guard. This is a French uh, Napoleonic cavalry unit uh, and it's based on a viewer request, a pretty insistent one I might add. Uh, but I did look into the unit and said, yeah, this would be something I would really like to paint. So when I was at Crisis, I picked up a model from uh, Gringo 40s. This is him. This is actually an officer. So he's a little bit going to be a little bit more blingy than your obvious or your obvious than your uh, everyday uh, gendarme. Uh, the thing that really interested me about this guy is that the gendarmes, compared to other French Napoleonic cavalry particularly, were pretty conservative in their dress. Um, they wore a very, very dark black-blue uniform um, without a lot of other colors going on in there. They had this big, tall, black furry hat on their heads, and then they rode this big, dark horse, usually super dark brown or black. And you'll also see as well that the trim on their uniforms and the piping is kind of silver. So the overall effect is, is kind of staid, kind of somber, but nonetheless very, very impressive. It's just not the same as sort of uh, usual kind of peacocky look that you expect from most French cavalry like Hussars or whatever. Uh, the other thing I'm really going to be taking an opportunity to do in this video is talk more about painting black horses. I mean, theoretically I already did one back in my Celtic War Chariot video, but honestly those horses kind of came out a lot more gray than they did black. So this time I'm going to be really focusing on showing you how to do a nice true black horse, which I think a lot of people will find very useful. So, and that's what I'm going to be doing mostly today. I'm going to be showing you how to paint the horse uh, and his tack and saddle and all that. And then if you tune in next week, I'll be talking about painting the gendarme himself. All right, so I'm starting off here as always with all the paints you're going to need for the first part of this tutorial series. Uh, this is everything for the horse and his tack and the saddle and saddle blanket and all of that good stuff. Now obviously since this is a black horse we're going to want to base coat him with black paint. And yes I know there's already black paint on there. That's the uh, surface primer from Vallejo. Uh, I don't like using it as sort of a base though because it's slightly shiny. It has different properties and it doesn't look uh, quite as good so uh, when I'm doing things that are going to be black I always go back over it with just normal Vallejo uh, black paint before I start. So now I'm going to start the really sort of laborious process of uh, highlighting this horse's uh, flesh. Now if you've watched any of my other horse painting videos you know that it's really really important that you get a really smooth very subtle blend on a horse's skin because that's really what looks best and when you're doing a black horse like this that's like doubly important because it's such sort of a subtle uh, color so I mean that is if you don't want to have it get gray looking which we don't in this case so the first couple highlight layers in particular are going to be so uh, so so subtle and so dark that you, you may not even have a good idea of what you're actually doing. You won't be able to see a lot of difference with the base coat, but you're just going to have to tr trust me that you need to apply those. You're going to need to work through those layers because even though it doesn't feel like it's doing much, it is, and, it, and it'll be just important to getting a sort of uh, better result uh, in the long run. Now, a little bit more about what I'm doing in terms of paint here. I'm working with uh, the black, and what I've done is I've taken that dark gray, and I've just mixed a little bit into there to start. Like I said, you want these highlight steps to be real, real subtle, uh, and I build that up sort of gradually on the body of the horse. Uh, you also probably notice there's some royal purple there in my sort of initial paint selection. I'm in each uh, layer. I'm adding just a hint of royal purple into uh, my my color that I'm working with. Uh, the reason I'm working with the royal purple here is because. Uh, I really think when you're doing animals, particularly that are black, having just a slight tint of something else in there really uh, makes it look better. A blue could work, a uh, red could work. I, I don't know. I think I just think purple is kind of a really nice one when you're doing horses like this. So kind of every highlight layer, I keep adding just a dab of royal purple into my work. So again, I've started with the black and the dark gray, a hint of royal purple, and I'm just gonna, for now, be kind of successful, building up successive highlight layers just by taking that base and mixing in more and more of the dark gray and getting it lighter and lighter. And, you know, it's really, 
you know, it, this is really going to come down to how patient you are, because just the more really gradual layers you create, the better a result you're going to get in the long run. But, you know, at some point it just gets maybe frustrating to do that or you just have time concerns and you don't want one model to take forever. So you'll have to kind of balance that out with, you know, what you feel comfortable with. So I'm just going to continue now uh, building up until I get up to very close to just kind of uh, pure uh, dark gray here. And by that point, I'm really going to be uh, very careful to be applying that only to areas where I really want highlights on the horse's musculature. Um, and I'm going to keep it real thin and I'm going to apply very thin, thin lines of it kind of and just really blend it out into sort of the darker base so that, you know, it, so that we don't get too intense a highlight and it, you know, gets too uh, gray looking. So at this point, uh, I've started to add some of that dark sea gray you saw at the beginning into sort of the, my sort of color that I've been working with, the one that I've been sort of steadily lightening uh, progressively. And that's just because at some point I, I can't really go any lighter just by adding the dark gray anymore. So that's why I add the dark sea gray. Uh, and I am going to be using it very sparingly in very small amounts into the you know, sort of, into sort of my highlight color because I, I don't you know I don't want this uh, to get too light. And I think it's important at this point to kind of make a distinction um, between sort of like a gray horse and a black horse and like w what is it that we're doing differently here? Uh, at least for me, how I see it is like with a gray horse, sort of the overall sort of tone of the horse is going to be lighter. Now with a black horse, you need to get some contrast in there. If it's just black, black, black with no highlights, no contrast, you're not, you know, you're, the horse is not going to look very good. So, but what you see a lot if you like look at photos of black horses is they're black, but they they tend to be very, very shiny. Their their coats will reflect and catch a whole bunch of light in certain places. So. And I'm not saying this is easy, but kind of your goal with a black horse is instead of trying to get sort of an overall sort of lighter shade, uh, like you would if you were going for a gray horse, what you're trying to do with your highlights here and your lighter colors uh, is apply it to areas on the horse's flesh where you think light would be hitting, where, you know, there would be some shininess uh, in, in sort of the rippling muscles. And so, so generally what you are doing is applying... You can be, in fact, applying very, very light colors, in fact, very, relatively light highlights, but you're going to be applying them in very small, sort of thin, narrow, um, controlled areas to make it look like you've got a little bit of that reflection going on, as opposed to trying to get sort of a broader coverage with uh, sort of these lighter tones. And when you are trying to paint something this dark, um, glaze can be super duper helpful because what I've done now is I've taken some black paint and I've mixed it into Vallejo uh, glaze medium so I get kind of a thin black basically and the difference I should point out here between a wash is a wash is thin and it runs and it'll pool into sort of recesses whereas the glaze uh, will coat evenly and smoothly on all surfaces. So uh, after I've kind of applied that sort of first highlight where I had a little bit of the dark sea gray in there, I'm not going to go over the, uh, again, with the black glaze, and I'm going to be especially focusing here on sort of shadow areas on the horse's body or areas 
that I want to be darker. And I'm doing this to really emphasize the black, really to bring it kind of back out and sort of balance out some of that gray that you can see has really been starting to build up on the horse. This, you know, this will let me bring back in some really pure kind of black tones that you can tend to lose over time and also really help you uh, tone down some of those uh, sort of gray highlights you're going for so it's, it's just not too overwhelming. And also really just blend the whole thing together. Um, I've found since I started using glaze that doing sort of very subtle sort of highlights like on uh, this horse uh, really get a lot easier when you have to do a lot of blending when you uh, start working uh, with uh, sort of glazes. And so I'm just going to keep building up the glaze here and just trying to sort of get my darker tones sort of you know kind of back where I want them to be so that this horse looks as dark as I want. Now I'm going to sort of be finishing off the horse flesh by adding several layers of very, very bright highlights. And this is again about getting that sort of shiny, uh, glossy coat effect that I was talking about earlier. So I've got the dark gray, which I've lightened quite a bit with dark sea gray. Still got that purple in there. Don't forget about that. Uh, and I'm going to be applying it. I'm using, I think I'm still, yeah, I'm now using a smaller brush. I've got like a number zero, double zero here, so I can do some real fine work. And you can see that I'm using it almost like an edge highlight. So you won't see me applying these really light colors over sort of large areas of the horse's body. I'm, see, you can see how I'm axing around the ears, the muzzle, uh, the eyes, and along the legs, you know, I'm, I'm making these very sort of thin, lines of brighter color around his knees and sort of anywhere that there's sort of muscle bulges. Um, and so this is a very light color. And, and you, as you see me go on, I'm going to push it even higher by adding more of the dark sea gray. And, uh, and by doing that, by having then relatively small areas of very, very, very light gray, as opposed to sort of a more sort of overall subtle uh, transition into gray, so in other words, we're, we've got a really high contrast between very dark areas next to like small areas of very light. You're going to get more of that effect of there being kind of shininess uh, in the coat as opposed to the horse itself just looking like kind of a dark gray horse. Now I'm going to move on to the mane and tail and if you kind of wore some paint off or messed these areas up while you were painting the rest and I know that's really easy to do because there's all these kind of rough sharp areas where it's really easy to knock bits of paint off go back in first and apply a nice black base coat before you start. Now to highlight I'm really using the same colors I used on the coat. Um, I'm starting out here by taking the dark gray again I've got a little bit of that royal purple in there and I'm starting out here I'm using a real small brush it's a double zero and I'm really gonna honestly be going here and uh, trying to fine line pretty much uh, all of the hairs in the mane and this is uh, a time-consuming way to do this um, a lot of horses I painted earlier I may have just kind of uh, painted and then sort of applied washes and done some overbrushing and that's fine too if you want to save some time but especially on a black horse I find that this really yields uh, really cool results so that's why I'm doing it so I'm starting out by just going over sort of every hair as much as I can individually with this first highlight color. 
I'm going to continue highlighting the hair now by just adding some of the dark sea gray in to lighten the shade I'm working with. And I'm just going to start sort of picking out hairs uh, more individually. Uh, so you, you again, like with the coat, you're going hopefully for illusion of sort of shininess with the hair. So I'm going to be kind of applying the lighter highlights to some strands, particularly ones where I feel like more light is going to be hitting, uh, where the hair is sort of rippling, it looks like. So sort of at the... Uh, sort of the apex of the ripple, you might want to pl apply a lighter color so it looks like there's some sh shininess there. Uh, so especially like on the mane, for example, I'm going to be look focusing a lot on the sort of the top of the mane, on the top of his head, uh, sort of the sides, but then more towards the top. Uh, that goes for the tail too. I'm going to be pa painting these highlights more towards the top strands of the hair where it kind of waves and bends. And I'm not going to be applying these uh, stronger highlights uh, more towards the base or the underside of the tail. And with the mane, I'm not going to be applying it so much to the area of the hair uh, that's uh, really close to his head. Uh, once I've got this second highlight layer on, I'm going to go back in with some, uh, once again, that black glaze. And I'm going to be using that to, again, darken some areas of the mane, uh, especially the ones that I kind of just avoided painting with the highlights. So kind of the areas... Um, like on the underside of his tail uh, and sort of at the base of his mane, for example. I'm then going to finish with one final highlight layer on the mane and tail. And again, this is almost just pure uh, dark sea gray. And I'm going back over and just sort of applying it to a few strands, just picking them out. You can see again where I really want it to look like there's some extra kind of shininess and light kind of reflecting and glancing off the individual strands in the mane. Now for the horse's hooves. Uh, you could do these in black or dark gray. There's plenty of black horses with those kind of hooves, but I thought it'd be fun to just work a little bit of contrast in. So I'm actually going to give him kind of brownish ivory colored hooves. Uh, I did look and there are black horses who have this combination, so it's perfectly valid. Uh, I'm base coating the hooves here first with some Vallejo khaki. Now the highlighting process on the hose is pretty straightforward. I'm just going to take some white and just sort of gradually kind of keep adding that into my khaki uh, base shade and then just applying more and more layers uh, and sort of just building that up. What's kind of fun when you're painting hoofs, if you want to give them a little bit more of a realistic look, uh, try applying sort of um, horizontal bands that kind of go around the hoof. Um, and that is that looks good because that's actually how horses hooves grow if you look at a horse hoof up close you'll see that there are these sort of lines and a slightly darker and lighter banding so if you want to paint those in a little bit you can uh, do that and it's nice because it also will kind of save you from having to do quite so much uh, blending work Next, I'm going to be moving on to the saddle and bridle and all the sort of leather tack on the horse. Uh, that's one thing that's a little unfortunate when you're doing black horses. A lot of the tack that used on Napoleonic cavalry was black. I mean, yeah, you see brown, but it was, the majority of it was black. Uh, so getting contrast when you already have a black horse can be a little bit tricky. Uh, I'm just starting off here with a black base coat. And then I'm going to be highlighting it actually in a very, very similar way to how I uh, did the horse. So I'm going to be first mixing in sort of dark gray to kind of progressively lighten uh, my black. And then later on for some high sort of shiny high edge highlights along sort of the tops of all the sort of leather straps and stuff. I'll be adding in a little bit of that dark sweet gray. So you may ask, well, like, how am I really differentiating here from the horse? Well, it comes down again to really kind of those extra sort of tones that you work into your gray. So you may remember with the horse flesh, I was working in that royal purple a little bit into my grays and blacks. And on the saddle and bridle, uh, what I'm going to be doing instead is I'm going to be taking some burnt umber and I'm going to be uh, working that into uh, these shades as I build it up. And in fact, when I'm completely done with painting the tack, I'll even go back over it with a very sort of thin, uh, sort of watered down coat of the burnt umber. 
And that works really well because this is leather and you can assume it's kind of been dyed black at some point, but that sort of brown cast and sort of that original brown base is still going to be in there. So if you're going to be painting black leather, uh, using sort of brown is sort of to give it a little bit of a tone is a really kind of effective way to get a nice looking result. Next, I'm going to be working on the sort of dark blue areas on the saddle blanket and sort of that those sort of that fanciness on the front of the saddle. Uh, I'm base coating these areas first with a mixture of black and Vallejo dark Prussian blue. Uh, dark Prussian blue, I know, is a very dark color, but I feel like when I'm going to paint a dark blue, I like to start out with an even darker base. So that's why I'm doing the black. Uh, uh, dark Prussian blue to start. Uh, then I'm going to take just pure dark Prussian blue and I'm going to start highlighting uh, over top of it. Um, and, and, and you're not going to see very much contrast at all. Uh, trust me when I say you really need to uh, just be patient and build up a couple of layers of the dark Prussian blue on its own and then you'll start to see a little bit of difference. And you may need to apply sort of a thicker, heavier coat of paint so don't dilute it as much as water because uh, the dark Prussian blue tends to be kind of a transparent shade surprisingly even though it's really dark. Uh, so you kind of sometimes need to keep it a little bit thicker to get like a nice strong uh, coverage. Now, this French blue from the Napoleonic era is very, very dark, but because we're painting these miniatures, contrast is your friend, and we're going to have to kind of pump it up a little bit more than it would be in real life just to make it look good. So what I've got here is some gray blue from Vallejo, and I have added just a little bit of it into my dark Prussian blue, just to dabble do you, because it's a, it's a potent light blue color. So I've, I've lightened my uh, dark Prussian blue, and now I'm going to be using this to very carefully start highlighting some of these areas. I'm going to apply the paint in really thin layers uh, and really blend it out so that it doesn't get too light too quickly because we want to keep that really nice dark blue shade as much as we can but we also need to see just build up just enough of a highlight there so that it gives sort of a better indication of sort of shape uh, and form and a little bit of, you know, just shows a little bit where there's going to be a little bit of light hitting different blue objects. I'm going to just paint the saddle itself now real quickly. You're not going to see much of it because the rider's going to sit on it, so don't worry about putting too much time in here. I'm going to be base coating it to start off with some German camouflage uh, black brown. I'm then going to apply a first highlight to the saddle with the burnt umber, which I got out earlier for painting the bridles and tack. And I'm going to keep this paint nice and thin, and I'm going to build it up more strongly sort of towards the edges of the saddle, and then kind of leave it sort of darker brown more towards the middle. And then in order to build up some more highlights on the saddle, I'm going to take some brown sand and I'm going to use that to lighten the burnt umber. And just like before, I'm applying these lighter brown shades towards the edge of the saddle and the different sort of parts and then sort of blend it inward so it stays dark towards the center. This is a lot easier. I mean, this is what I actually always do when I'm painting brown leather, but it's a lot easier to see and it's a lot more obvious what I'm doing uh, on this big surface area here because, you know, when you're normally painting little thin straps, it's harder to have sort of a dark interior. So uh, I'm just going to build up maybe one layer with a sort of a br burnt umber uh, brown sand mix and then I'm going to go to just a coat of just pure brown sand by itself almost applied here uh, as an edge highlight sort of along sort of the you know sort of sharp edges of the saddle. And again if, if this doesn't you know work out too well or whatever don't really worry about spending too much time on this because again this is like the majority of this is going to be completely covered up by the uh, rider. Now the next part here is 
kind of fun, but also kind of annoying. And that's what we're going to be doing is painting all of the braid uh, on the saddle blanket and stuff. Uh, this with a normal gendarme would be kind of white, I think, but with an officer, it's all supposed to be silver. Um, of course, so that adds sort of an added challenge to what we're trying to do here. I have got the <laughs> dark sea gray here that I'm using for base. I have taken some of the gray blue and added that in there just a little bit to give it a bit more of a blue cast. And so first off, I, all I really want is to get a nice base coat on here. And this is a bit of a fiddly work because you've got a lot of fine detail here. So I used kind of a big brush for this, uh, but you probably will get better results maybe with a zero or uh, a double zero here just because you'll have better control and you're less likely to kind of get the gray paint where you don't want it. I'm now gonna start building up my first highlight on the trim and braid. You can see I'm now really using that smaller brush that I was talking about earlier, cause it's just easier. I've just taken uh, some white and I've used it to lighten uh, my dark sea gray and I've mixed in more of that gray blue. I wanna really keep a very strong blue tone here in the gray, stronger than I would like uh, if I was maybe otherwise painting something gray and just wanted a blue cast. I really want this to look slightly blue. And the reason I'm doing that is because I think <clears throat> when you're trying to paint sort of non-metallic metal silver, which is basically what we're doing here, I think that bluish kind of uh, cast is one thing that kind of gives it away or get, makes it look a little bit more like actual silver. Uh, so that's why I've got that in there. Uh, and this first layer, I'm really just kind of concerned with um, sort of defining those sort of separate areas. There's a lot of sort of separate uh, pieces here to the trim and I wanna make sure that I leave a nice dark line uh, in between them. You might even find it useful once you're done to go back in and fill those sort of creases in with some dark gray just to really pop up the contrast even higher and really define those areas better. And as a matter of fact, when you're doing non-metallic metal, your friend is going to be really high contrast. So you want areas that are really dark next to areas that are really light. If you can manage that, that's what gives the non-metallic metal effect. So uh, yeah, I would recommend you go back in with darker shades, you know, as needed to keep that contrast between the two light and dark areas really high. I'm going to continue then just building up that brightness on the silver areas with just the same color I was using before, but I've just worked in even more white now. Um, it's around this point, you're probably gonna wanna start uh, taking these lighter highlights and just not applying them everywhere, just kind of focusing on sort of certain areas. Cause you know, if you've got metal, you're gonna have areas where there's more light hitting and then right next to that areas where it's darker, where there's less light hitting sort of, um, you know, well, it's, it's hard to explain. Look at a metal surface, you'll know what I mean. Uh, because this is basically fabric, it's embroidered with metallic uh, thread, you don't have to do that quite to the same extent as if this was a real metal surface. So you can be more subtle and it'll still look good. But that is something you wanna keep in mind when you're painting that. You know, try to have some lighter areas with some, um, you know, kind of slightly darker areas right next to them and sort of just kind of as necessary, you can kind of blend the lighter area kind of into the darker area. Now this highlight layer I'm applying here uh, is actually mostly white. It's got a little tiny bit of the dark sea gray in it and quite a bit of the gray blue. It's a really blue gray. It's a really almost pastel blue shade in fact. And I'm applying uh, that now. This is a pretty high highlight. I'm gonna go a little bit higher before I'm done. Uh, but it this this is close to kind of the top. And if you wonder why I'm doing non-metallic metal here, uh, it's not just because I want to show off, it's because I really honestly think it looks better when you have sort of braid, sort of fabric braid with metallic trim. I think using true metallic paint on these areas just looks weird and off. It doesn't really look like fabric anymore. It looks like 
just a metal surface. And that's especially jarring if you're going to have sort of other metal things on the model, like in this case, the gendarme has a sword and there's like various other metal fittings and bits on the model. So if you have those and then you paint like this trim with metallic paint, it's, 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 it's not going to make very much sense visually. So even if you don't feel like you can actually uh, manage to achieve good looking non-metallic metal, I would say try uh, and it might not come out looking like non-metallic metal, but it, I think it'll still, I think, give an overall better, more convincing looking model to have these areas just painted with normal paint uh, as, a, as opposed to sort of actually something with the metallic pigment. Now, as far as painting non-metallic metals go, it tends to be kind of this process where you keep applying layers and you keep applying layers and it doesn't really look much like metal. Um, and it tends to be like the real magic happens with the very last highlight layer what you apply, which is just the brightest color. And almost always that's going to be white, whether you're doing silver or steel or gold, white is always going to be kind of your top color. Uh, and so you can see that here. It, it just all of a sudden everything is brought together when you put that really extreme bright highlight in there. Uh, I'm using a real small brush here. I've got my paint nice and thin because I'm working with such fine detailed areas. Um, and I'm going to be, see here, I'm going to be really sort of building it up. And you can see here, especially how uh, on certain areas, I'm really applying the white heavily where it looks like there's more light hitting. So you get this really kind of strong reflection effect. And then I'm leaving that uh, next to areas that I want to be uh, a little bit darker. And this here, I mean, you don't want to apply very much of this highest, brightest uh, highlight when you're doing your non-metallic metals, obviously. You just need a little tiny bit, um, but it's sort of the ingredient uh, that is, when done properly, is what's going to just bring the whole thing together and just really, you know, sort of sell the look if you are able to do this right. And even if you don't kind of succeed 100% with your non-metallic metal, uh, generally, as long as you've got this really, really bright high highlight on there um, and then some sort of darker areas kind of balancing it out, you're still going to have a pretty sort of nice looking result. There's a little bit of red we need to do on the horse's equipment. So that blanket he's carrying there uh, should be at least partially red. And then, he, and then in the case of the gendarme, uh, the horse has a, sort of a red bow around its tail there. So uh, I'm just gonna start out by base cutting those areas using Vallejo Black Red. I'm then going to start highlighting it first with a 50-50 mixture of the black red and some Citadel uh, Mephiston red. Uh, I'm just building that up here kind of gradually. And then after that's on there, I'm going to go back in with just uh, pure Mephiston red and use that to highlight further. Uh, it should be pointed out here that I'm painting that blanket completely red and that's not strictly correct. It's actually blue and red and they fold it so that it's sort of sort of half red and half blue and that was a mistake that I made overall when I was doing this horse I kind of forgot about that to be honest um, so I did eventually go back in and correct it and paint sort of the under half in the same blue as the rest of the saddle blanket uh, and you'll see that in the part two of the video that I've sort of that I've fixed that problem but when you're doing this just keep that in mind it's actually kind of nice because it means you won't have to paint quite as much of the blanket in red And now I'm going back over the red with a layer of Citadel Evil Sun Scarlet. It's a nice bright red, but quite transparent, remember, so be sure that you apply several layers of the paint here just to kind of get it up to its maximum saturation. And now finally, just to drive up the contrast even more on the red, I'm making an edge highlight, and I just took uh, the Evil Sun Scarlet, I mixed in a bit of the Vallejo Khaki and then I just lightened it with some white. Uh, you could have gotten out another color like beige or buff to do this honestly and it would have been a little bit handier, but I was trying to work with what I already had on the table, so that's why I used those colors. And I'm just going to be applying this kind of really to the edges of the fabric. Uh, don't go overboard highlighting your red with this because you don't really want to turn the whole thing into pink. You just want to put that sort of, sort of extra accent on the sort of fine edges. 
There are some very small metal areas on this horse that I want to paint now. Uh, first, I am doing the kind of steel silver areas. I base coated those with a mixture of black and Vallejo air silver, so get a nice kind of dark metallic shade. And then I'm just gonna go over them with the pure Vallejo air silver, nice and thin because silver is a potent color, remember? But I do like them looking nice and shiny. There's also on one side of this horse's uh, harness, he's got sort of a round disc, which should be kind of a brass gold. So I base coated that with German camouflage black Black brown uh, with a bit of uh, the greedy gold from Army Painter mixed into it and then I just did a really quick highlight with pure greedy gold followed by a mixture of greedy gold and the Vallejo air silver to get a really bright shine on the sort of just the top. Okay so here is the finished uh, horse for our elite gendarme. Uh, I think I was pretty effective here in producing the look of a black horse. Uh, and keep in mind, he actually is darker in real life. My camera, which I use here, which is really great in low light situations, and I love it for that, uh, kind of has the downside that it tends to take things that are somewhat darker looking to the eye and actually make them appear lighter. But uh, trust me when I say he looks nice and dark, and I think you can still see that on camera, that this is very clearly more of a black horse. Uh, than a gray one but again if you feel like this is too light for your taste uh, it's really easy just to tone this down again by just taking some of that black glaze we were working with earlier and just kind of applying uh, more of that or just applying kind of a thin layer or several thin layers all over the horse once you've put on uh, your bright highlights and that'll just knock everything down uh, several notches but you'll still kind of keep uh, that the, the, all the highlight work you did earlier it'll just be a little more subtle uh, I also like how my saddle blanket and all that came out. Uh, the non-metallic metal silver. Uh, I mean, I think I could have pushed the highlights and the sort of the contrast with the dark and light a little harder on that. Uh, but it can be a little dangerous, a little bit scary to do that, especially when you've got a model that you really want to look good from sort of all angles and all directions. And so in those cases, I tend to be a little bit more conservative. Uh, with the non-metallic metal so that you know you don't end up with something that maybe looks good in one direction and then a little bit strange from other angles. So if you enjoyed this video uh, please like it, uh, share it, leave me your comments of course with what you thought, your questions, uh, and don't forget to subscribe if you haven't gotten a chance to do so already. Uh, next week uh, please tune in too because we'll be talking about how to paint the rider that goes along with this horse and we'll be putting everything together so you can see the sort of the finished result with the man and beast sort of in tandem. And I promise you it looks really, really good. So that's all for now and uh, I'll see you next time.